Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. When this country's civil war began in 1861, Vermont soldiers stepped into duty, and a man from Brattleboro accompanied those soldiers into war. The Brattleboro man was a photographer named George Houghton. Houghton captured poignant images of Vermont soldiers in the field, camp, and at home. With the help of today's guest, we're going to learn more about Houghton and the mark he made on capturing a time frame of American history. Joining me is Don Wickman of Keysville, New York. Don is a longtime historian and author, and he's been with us before to talk about Vermont and the Civil War. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Fran. Always fun to be here. Yeah, it's great. Um, so before we get into his career, why don't, can we talk about a little bit about what photography meant to the Civil War? Oh. If we go back 1861, photography is still in its infancy. But the interesting part about it is that before then, the mediums that pr would present scenes would be like uh, pencil, ink, uh, pastel, watercolor. And you had the right, you could Photoshop those images back then. If somebody had a really bad birthmark, guess what? It disappeared. <laughs> uh, but photography, uh, the term I use is that it presented all the warts. Right. Right. Anything wrong with the complexion. If you had a bad hair day, you didn't get uh, <laughs> comb your hair before the photo. Guess what? It was there. Right. So this was the presentation that was really interesting. And also they created a technology that uh, that allowed for what they call carte de visites, which are like wallet right. sized playing card images. And they were relatively inexpensive. Right. And that's when people had to be very stiff because it took the exposure had to be take a very long time. 10 Most to 15 seconds. Right, right. right. So long. that's one reason why people didn't frown, uh, smile as right. much because it took more time. <laughs> <laughs> so the Civil War images were really some of the very first seen by the general public um, on this kind of wide scale of, of war. Exactly, right. exactly. Unfortunately, it started bringing war into the room, into the house. And the perpetrator of that more or less early on is Matthew Brady. Sure. And he sent a photographer down to Antietam after the battlefield. And he, uh, that photographer took pictures of the dead Confederates. Yeah. And they created this exhibit in New York called the Dead of Antietam and people lined up to see this. So what a lot of historians call it, and I learned from this process is that the Civil War is the birth of photojournalism. Right, right. And it was the first time war wasn't, was often glorified in these paintings or sketches. And this is not, there's nothing glorified about these No, photos. they said that people would sit, stand in front of these photos for 15 to 20 wow. minutes, just riveted on them, n knowing they weren't Union soldiers because they had already been buried because mm. the Union troops had possession of the battlefield. The Confederates were secondary. Right. Wow. So where does this man from Brattleboro, George Houghton, fit in? Okay, well, he had learned photography in the early 1850s and opened up his own studio in late 1859. Health presented, prevented him from joining up. He mm. really wanted to fight, so he did something else. He took his camera and followed the troops. Wow. And he made three separate trips to Virginia to follow primarily the Vermont Brigades. Uh, Every year, once a year. Right, that, yeah. uh, yep, fall Basically. of 1861, he was down near Langley, McLean, Virginia. Then he followed him through the uh, Seven Days Campaign or the Virginia Peninsula, Williamsburg, Yorktown, out to Richmond. And then he was in Fairfax County in 1863. Wow, and he, he's really in the camp, so he's providing a different side of the soldier's life, not so much the battlefields, because much of war isn't in battle. No, it's camp right? life. Right. It's camp life. And that's the part that is so wonderful about it, is that he captured these men when they were relaxed. Mm. And nothing could capture it more when you look at some of these scenes. You're like, wow, this is what reenactors want to see, because it sure. is camp life. And it's so important uh, that it showed the men at ease. Uh, but 
he still went and he captured scenes of entrenchments, mm. um, especially at Yorktown, Virginia, and also Vermont burials. Mm. Um, unfortunately, Vermont soldiers, these are taken at Camp Griffin and also outside Yorktown, Virginia. Wow. And um, one, one scene in, in particular stood out uh, for Houghton, um, stood out to people, which was a, a slave family. Right, he, and this has been used extensively. It's uh, one of these images is at the National Archives, so it's huh. publicly available. And it was a slave family that was taken out of Dr. William Gaines' house east of Richmond, Virginia. And here's the part about the photojournalism is that this is a scene where Northerners are first seeing possibly a slave family mm. and how they lived. Mm. Uh, and what I like about it is that there's a um, corn husk um, mat in front of, uh, as a d uh, for uh -huh. the doorstep, and those things are still right. sold today. Wow. Right, but here it was being used by the slave family to uh, clean off the shoes. Now, what, would he have been there not as a photojournalist, or, or was he? Was it mainly as a business, like I'll take your photograph of your troop or your tent or your you as an individual to be sent back home? Is that mainly how he worked, It was worked, a business. It yeah. was a business. He was uh, definitely selling his pictures. Uh, there's some journal saying that we went to the artist or the photographer to get our picture taken. So he was out there to make money. Right. Right, right. and he actually had a little cart that said Houghton Photography that traveled along with him. It was a traveling dark room. Oh, fantastic. So he would, do, he would make the images right there? They had to. It was yeah. the technology is that you took it, you went to the, um, you know, to the traveling dark room, produced it, let it dry, and then you would do prints later on. It was not anything like doing film photography that we had uh, up to digitized a little, photos. Yeah, yeah now, we have it easy digital. now. <laughs> right. So what are, what are some favorite Houghton photographs? Of okay. I selected five. Okay, I'm sure that's not uh, easy. No, it's not, it's not. And um, the one is there's a group of uh, officers of the 6th Vermont Regiment taken at Camp Griffin. And mm -hmm. it shows everybody at ease, but the interesting stat there is I've identified all but one of these officers and their wives, and 60% of them didn't finish up the war. They were either killed, mm -hmm. wounded, died of disease, or were discharged for disability. Mm -hmm. which is a frightening stat. The other one is, another one is the, um, these non-commissioned officers of the 12th Vermont Regiment. They're 20 miles from the front, but they could have looked like they were 200 miles from the front, smoking a pipe. It's pure relaxation. The other one is a camp scene of the um, company uh, F of the 4th Vermont Regiment outside Williamsburg, mm -hmm. just showing how at ease it is. Uh, the graves of the 3rd Vermont, uh, mm -hmm. they were the, victims of the failed assault at Lee's Mills in early 1862. And the last one is taken, I believe, from Houghton's studio window. The building is still in existence in Brattleboro. Huh. The inside has been, has been changed, but the building is still there. And um, it shows the 4th Vermont veterans coming back, and there's such a uh, opposite of the way they left so neat and tidy and all of a sudden now it's three years later and you know they're battle-worn veterans they're t mainly dressed out of uniform right. and they're it just shows home. but they're home yes right. and the kids are hanging out and playing like a, oh I'm gonna get in this picture you know and well uh, it's amazing that these these photographs still exist. You know how many he he took and how many have survived. It's 150 years later, and how many came back. Where where do you find these? Well, I'm looking at now is um, there's probably well over a hundred in existence. They're spread. The biggest collection is the, at the Vermont Historical Society, where Houghton gave them in 1864 a volume of his work, mm -hmm. and received a lifetime membership in return. All right. Right. Another one was a uh, volume was bought by J. Gregory Smith as governor, and it ended up in the UVM Special Collections. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple, there's some non-copies, but then there's ones that are in the uh, Library of Congress and in private collections. Brattleboro Historical Society has a number also. So it, it, it seems that he holds a vital place in Vermont Civil War history 
and in pho photojournalism, but he's not at that, we, we don't hear his name like Matthew Brady, uh, except maybe for what you have done with your book. Right, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, he, he's sort of second level for notoriety, but not for importance, because he should play this m more critical role that this man was good. Yeah. He had wonderful composition, an excellent eye. It would have been interesting if he lived longer past his 44th mm. year to see if he would have continued more in photography. He took uh, photos of the Connecticut River Valley and um, the area of the Hudson River north of Albany. He played around with that uh, after the war. But, you know, health was a deterring factor. But. Um, Fortunately, because the Vermont Historical Society saw that this was important, uh, they took some previous work that I had done on a research fellowship and made his photos into a book. And there's about 80 in there. Wow, okay. And uh, as you asked about picking out the photos, it's difficult to like just take five photos right. out of 100 and say, this is really interesting. This is a favorite. So um, here, here's your book. Is this just all Civil War, or is it, um, is it also expanded in, into a, his other travels? No, uh, it's Civil War okay. except two early pictures of Brattleboro before the war, showing right. that one where his studio uh, was and still is in existence. Right. They've added a fourth floor to the building. And, um, but the rest of them are the Civil War photos that I focus on. Fantastic. Well, Don, thank you so much for introducing us to George Hout, who really was one of the first photojournalists and, and, and brought us back history. We, we hope you have raised his um, uh, notoriety. Right. Raise the bar. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Thank you so much for, for coming in. You're welcome, Fran. Thank and you. Thank it's you always fun. Thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Mm -hmm.